No, you're good. Never pushed record. I did. I could have. Fair enough. All right, we'll start that again. <laughs> <laughs> Round two. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off Road Podcast. I'm Big Z. And I'm Ian with Full Throttle Battery. And we are doing round two. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> of the Side by Side Guys Off Road Podcast. Uh, we've been doing a lot lately, uh, running around with our heads chopped off. You've been busy with work, family, traveling, all this other stuff. And uh, yeah, what's going on? Uh, I've got one car in Central Oregon, one car in King County. Um, So that leaves me with no cars. Uh, The only thing that I have to go wheeling is, uh, man, I'm down to... I'm down to a Forerunner, an FJ Cruiser, a ZJ Jeep, a WJ Jeep, a Bram 3500, but no side by side. <laughs> I'm just going to excuse myself. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think you have a, a spot here. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, so we've uh, had a few things happen. We just had a podcast episode uh, not too long ago on the Commander with um, some buddies over at Westside Motorsports, talked about that release and what that meant uh, for the Commander, for the community, for the dealers. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, go listen to that. Um, we have also had a couple uh, podcasts come out that were awesome with some special guests. Uh, and uh, we were on a trip. We went down to Oregon. How'd that go? Well, um, despite- and for all of our mudding and East Coast and desert guys, you can just fast forward the next 15, 20 minutes while we talk about the dudes. Oh, I, well, yeah. yeah. Uh, it went okay, yeah. Uh, had a little steering issue, had a little brake issue, but still had a lot of fun. So let's talk about that steering issue. So you were having an issue where it was pulling one way versus the other? So if you're just driving and let go of the wheel, it darts to the left hard. Like, like not, not like veered. Not like veered, yeah. And <laughs> like hard left. Y- yeah, almost to the point where, you know, your right, your right hand, your left hand is always holding that steering wheel in position because there's resistance. You know, it's wanting I'm sure glad to you dart said steering left. wheel because that could have got weird. I know. Um, there's resistance. It's wanting to push it to the left. And uh, we found out from Rich Maxi. I'm just going to, like, if we're just going to have a drinking game, like, every time we say Rich's name, someone has to drink. I know. He's going to start <laughs> charging us. Um, but he reset the value. Um, a, th- a thing that I knew existed prior to... to, to <laughs> yeah, so just yeah. to explain to people... Uh, yeah, so let the, basically... Let, let, the take, let the tech guy take over right now. Letting the nerd out of the bag. So... Nerds assemble! <laughs> the uh, So on your cars, the ECU will have a value of your steering rack of where zero is, right? And it's going to try to calculate how to get back to zero. Uh, and that's where you get the the assistance part. that It's, it's kicking in the pump to, to push it one way or the other. Uh, or I should say the electric uh, assistance. Um, and on the Can-Am, apparently this is a semi-common issue where steering will feel like your rack's stripped or, or broken or, or something's wrong with it. And uh, through trial and error, Rich, our buddy, has figured out that a lot of times it's just the value the computer has stored of where zero is on the actual rack. And sometimes it needs to get adjusted. And that can be, you know, you've changed tie rods or you've had an accident or you bumped it too hard or something where the value has jumped from its original center of, of rack. Yeah. And if you rip that thing apart, they recommend resetting it or double checking it. Uh, every single time that you do some sort of maintenance. If you're servicing the rack, replacing the oil, if you're doing, you know, servicing the the rack on an X3 is very common. Yeah. Yeah. And so obviously steering has always been kind of the bump steer issue. Plus, you know, some of the handling characteristics has always been kind of a topic for Can-Ams for the X3s. Um, and so anyways, he, he plugged in his bud system, found the value, reset that value to zero. And then magically, we had steering <laughs> in a normal capacity. We didn't I, have brakes, but we had steering. Yeah, yeah so yeah. your brakes started fading. Yeah, but after about the third to fourth time we bled them, I was down to about three pumps before the car would slowly start to stop. Uh, it was sketchy, you know, no yep. question about it. I, I, You know, we were out there filming, and there's certain things that I want to do, and it was hard to accomplish without it, but, you know, we made do. It was a lot of fun. Well, I you mean, know. for you, I would assume brake is just letting off the gas, right? To a degree, yeah. It, uh, <laughs> It, it, it was a good time. You know, the, the weather kind of, the weather takes its toll on that place and it creates a lot of really interesting and unique features. And this was no exception this, this last week. So we were looking at the brakes and it looks like maybe there might be a caliber or a bracket issue something's or something. There. Something's moving that yeah. shouldn't be. Yeah. So. It, it would be, you know, with the impact that the wreck that I didn't do, um, took on the machine, 
you're you're gonna unfortunately discover some stuff that isn't functioning properly, and uh, you know it's just one step at a time. And right. So the the rear hub and the tire and the trailing arms and right. or and all that stuff got fixed, right. but I think maybe that that caliber bracket right might be a, a point of failure that we need yeah. to replace. Well, let's just put it this way: I had enough fun in Winchester Bay. And even without, even with some mechanical challenges, but I had enough fun out there to where I cannot wait to get back to the mountains. You know, I'm not going to say that uh, I would pass up on a dune trip because, you know, I'll never pass up on a dune trip, but I, I just, I cannot I wait. Trail to, time. I cannot wait to put that chainsaw on the side of that rig, go clear some trails, go get dirty, go get sweaty. Uh, just that went that went sideways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going back to this uh-huh. weird part. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I, uh, I, I, you know, Conconoli, Idaho is calling, and uh, I can't. Conconoli and Idaho. Yeah, Conconoli is not in Idaho. Yeah, no, I, everywhere, <laughs> everywhere is calling. Yeah. yeah, the mountains, the mountains are singing our names for sure. For sure. Yeah, and the other thing is too, there's a, we're we're doing some pretty aggressive stuff on that X3, so we need to figure out what kind of fuel consumption it's going to be doing with a bigger turbo. Um, the RZR Pro, finally, you know, just based on work, work's been work's been crazy. Uh, our schedules have been crazy. Uh, what's been going on with my dad has presented some challenges to where the Pro got parked right after San Hollow UTV takeover. And it hasn't moved since. I was even worried that, I mean, you're talking five and a half months. I was even worried that I wouldn't even be able to start it. I turn it over and full throttle for the wind. <laughs> that rugged radio system just goes boom, boop, fires right up. And yep. then the car just cranks right over. We loaded it up and we rolled. But uh, that thing that thing is in the process of, you know, as you know, they, they're never finished. But uh, it, we're getting some work done on it. And I'm really excited. You know, I'm, I'm going against the grain of what kind of what I think. You know, you know, I've had conversations about uh, light above the eye line, light below the eye line. We're doing a kind of a cut, like a little pre-runner rack on it with some Baja Designs goodies. It's it's going to be, I, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing it. it. And, and like I told you, when we were loading it up, I'm like, man, I've missed, <laughs> I've missed this thing. So for the record, <laughs> the X3 guy, the YXZ convert, convert to X3 convert has now on record said that he misses driving a razor. <laughs> I, I do. I do. I love that car. I, I you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's lo- man, listen, you remember being out at San Hollow and <laughs> That thing's laboring to pull around. It's got 33-inch big tires on it that weigh a lot. And you can feel the car labor. And the belt tapped out a couple of times. Yep. So we're, we're ripping with four people in that thing. And the people that we were ripping back with, I'm just driving, you know, and just throwing it around. And next thing you know, I'm just like, where'd they go? <laughs> Look back not people, about a quarter Not people mile, in the car, no, people no, trailing no, yeah, you. <laughs> I was just like... Oh, oh, there they are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I didn't feel like I was hauling the wood with it, but, the you know, with that HCR long travel kit, it just soaks some stuff up that other cars, little two-seaters, are going to get beat up it, on. It is such a capable platform yeah. once you get wide with it and, and, and throw it on some bigger rubber. It, it basically just rolls over anything and into any corners. Yeah, so. yeah. We got, some, uh, we got some new tires to try out on it. You know, um, that's one thing that you and I have talked about. We've probably got enough miles under our belt to do three tire reviews right now yeah and uh, we're about to go a new direction on the pro uh itp was very generous and they sent us a set of tenacities a 32 inch the lighter version you know they do it in a steel belt and then they do it in a uh, uh nylon and I'm, I'm really excited to get those things on there and and see how it goes and those are a tr- true 32 as well what's on there right now is technically a 33 and the tenacities uh not tenacities the uh the ITPs are uh, of true 30, 32 inch tall. Right, where the other tire, tire yeah. was very much claiming like a Braven. size and measuring shorter. Yeah. This one's measuring true. Kind of like the Bravens that I just reviewed recently. They actually measure installed on the car at pressure, mm-hmm. 32 inches. Yeah, and you had an inch and a half over my Liberties. Yeah, and my and Liberties are th- supposed to be 32s. 32s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that it, it's definitely the the marketing game in the tire world, right? Like identifying the companies and the and the models of tire that actually measure true, and people love them. Yeah, the tape measure tape measure doesn't lie, but that doesn't. And you know, we're objective enough to get past that and just p- predominantly focus on the performance of the tire. And I, you know, I want to say on those liberties. But if you're buying for clearance, you yeah. need to know that my my liberties are. I want to say they're they're in my storage unit right now, and they're sitting at. On, and this is off the X3. They are sitting at probably about thirty percent, maybe somewhere in there. Some of them fared, the 32s? Yeah, they fared some fared a little bit better. And those tires have about twenty eight hundred miles on them of trail 
trail abuse. And I, I can't say they didn't. I, th- I thought they performed pretty well, you know? I mean, I, would you look at, if you had bought, and, well, you did buy those. The, mm-hmm. the, you bought the 32s to replace yeah. the 30s. Um, it, knowing kind of the wear pattern on those, just like a quick, you know, quick take on them. You know, were you happy with the, the wear characteristics on those tires the and wear, the handling? Yeah, the wear characteristics, you know, we didn't rotate them or anything like that. Shame on me. But uh, they, they held up, they held up really well. And but from a performance standpoint, I have absolutely nothing negative to say about them. You know, the rumor is that they don't perform as well in mud as they do. Uh, and they're and, not designed to. And they're not designed to. Um, but I have absolutely nothing bad to say about them whatsoever. I thought they they felt light on the car. You know, anytime you move from like a 30 to a 32, you'll get some rotational uh, resistance. And like you, you noticed that right that. up front. You had mentioned going from the 30 to the 32. You're like, whoa, these are completely different. Yeah, they definitely were. But the X3 does have enough power to where it's manageable. Right. And I, I thought that the Liberty did great. Yeah. 100%. So we'll, we'll have to follow up on that. I think yeah. that'll be a good story to tell. Yeah. Um, but what about, uh, so we went to, okay. So go back to where we, <laughs> where we started well, this ride. That was a hard derail. Um, <laughs> we went to Winchester for a little group yeah. ride and, uh, some time out there. We got through some of those mechanical issues and went riding, had some, uh, you know, for the time of year, we had good weather. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't really like the last year we went, it was pouring rain, nearly freezing and the campground was flooded. Uh, so <laughs> that was one thing. Yeah. Uh, this year it was just more of a sporadic shower here and there. And yeah. And, and I do get a lot of questions like, why are you going at the end of February? And the reason is, is the, the winter just wreaks havoc on that place. And it's a it different get, place. It is. And you get an opportunity to do stuff that is, um, uh, and go through some stuff that's going to be a lot sketchier. And I think we found out about that. You know, I, <laughs> <laughs> so so one of the things that was nice I, with is that all the things that were wrong with the X3, it's the one that came out unscathed. <laughs> <laughs> so we, you know, the nice thing about it is it compacts that dirt down quite a bit and allows somebody without paddles like like me uh, to go out and have a good time. And uh, interesting, a lot, interestingly enough, the the front diff on our razor is starting to give us some weird noises and stuff. So I was actually in two wheel drive the whole time on non paddles. I was actually on the Bravens that I've took on the Idaho BDR that are worn down and was still able to have fun out in the dunes. In case you were wondering if Zach is gnarly. <laughs> so, you know, we had a good time. We went we were doing some stuff and then we had a rescue mission. Uh your brother Which one? <laughs> <laughs> so actually actually to start that was on that was all Saturday, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. All those things. So we had done some writing, some filming, some whatever. Uh, and then on Saturday, we actually started getting really good weather at some point in the day. Uh, but I went on a, on a fuel rescue for Ben. He had ran out of fuel. And then a little bit later, we were back at camp and we got word that Ben had found a, a found hole a in the ground. Crater. Yeah, I just kind of <laughs> swallowed up the front end of his car and dropped him down in a hole and had to go rescue him out of that. So a number of guys from the campground all came with us, including... That was a bit of a chore to get that thing out of there, too. It was it, it was, it it was doable, but it wasn't... It wasn't was, bad, but yeah. it wasn't like a quick pullout, right? Yeah, I mean, the easiest line to do it was uh, full of water, so it was out. You know, yeah. we couldn't have taken it out that way. But, you know, it was definitely one of those things, if you were alone... That would have been a lot of work to get that thing out of there. And with a, oh, y- for sure. with a YXZ, I mean, you're running the risk of, of destroying your clutch trying to get out of the sun, right. a hole like that. And he was running small tires and everything. So basically, the entire car just became yeah. a friction point yeah. to get out of the hole. Yeah, you hear the word reading sand a lot with sand riders, the same way you'll hear snow wheelers say reading snow, you know. And uh, it's definitely true. You got you to gotta have your head on a swivel out there 100% of the time or else well, you're going to get swallowed up. And we had gone out earlier down that lake, that lake leg of the dunes and a number of times we had stopped short of yeah. falling into something yeah. and as soon as we found out that he had dropped into a hole <laughs> me and taylor from amtoff road kind of just looked at each other and were like we know where he's at because <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i mean it, it was just so identifiable that section of the dunes was was pretty brutal right um so anyways uh we, he, he's added a lot of rotating resistance to that car. He's got an alternator on there. He did a gear reduction, and he wasn't able to hit a lot of the lines that he did last year because I he think, was a bit slower. But he yeah. last year had paddles too, right? He did it. Well, he had paddles this year too. But you know, the car's heavier. He had an extra body in the car with the rotating resistance and yep. stuff. I mean, there was, you know, there were there were certain obstacles that he couldn't attack, and uh, that's a place where horsepower is king. You really have to have it. And right. as I found out 
when uh, when I went into a crevasse, you know, and it uh, where it definitely saves your butt sometimes. It does, hundred percent. So we had some guys from the campground go with us to pull him out. We we did you know a couple uh, a couple winch lines to pull him out. One to keep him going backwards. One to keep him safe. Um, g- eventually got him out undug and and out of the hole. Uh, and he was fine. His car was fine. That Yamaha didn't have anything wrong with it. Yeah, I never saw its roof. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was nothing was Which like bent or anything. I think maybe the front bumper was a little bit bent, but uh, he fabbed up the front bumper. Like the car itself was perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was going full speed into it too. So that was a pretty hard hit for him in a side. Yikes. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. he was pretty much uh, in it. <laughs> so um, that to a dead stop. So his harnesses did a good job and kept them safe and, and all that. They weren't hurt or anything. I'm sure just Amped off road for the win. Yeah, no kidding. So uh, got him out. And then so Steve was with us. And we went for a couple rips around the dunes since we were already out there. And uh, we came up over, uh, well, we were had, had been doing some stuff on the back end. And we decided to head back to camp. This is what happens when we let you lead, <laughs> Mr. 2060 Vision. <laughs> so, so I was in front and I was taking us up this big face and I just, I saw, you know, the tops of the, of the, this big dune kind of just deteriorated. So I, I found one that looked applicable to drive through and and stuck it good went over and i made my way down and headed to the next one and i was on top of the next one and i realized nobody was behind me (laughs) and so i look behind me and then all i see is uh you parked on top of the other dune that i just went through and a car you know on its lid on its lid yeah so what uh what happened there so um as you know, as everyone knows, it drives an X3. You cannot see out of them when you're going uphill, when you're vertical. And uh, I didn't, you know, I followed your line pretty good. And then the next thing you know, we're, we're dropping into, you know, like a dune crevasse. And it was every bit, I, I got to say, I mean, it was it was much taller than me. It mm-hmm. was probably... It was taller a, than the car. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a very, very steep drop. And I had, uh, had cameraman Cam with me. And as soon as we dropped in there, I'm like, we're on our side or on our roof or worse. And your instinct in that situation, or at least your instinct, what your instinct should be, is to pin it. Like yeah. when that happens, you pin it. I mean, and, you're on top of a, a hundred yeah, foot cliff yeah, you, of sand. You like, must establish dominance. <laughs> yeah. you, well, you have to have the, the the understanding that if you just gun it and get straight again, you're going to be fine. But it's a scary concept. Yeah. So I gunned it. And the next thing you know, I'm totally clear of it like we were going down we were on our side we were on two wheels pinned it and then next thing you know it threw it power it it, it got enough traction where it caught the other side of the crevasse and then all and which subsequently helped all four tires make contact next you know i'm out of it and you're talking less than three seconds where that happened and we got out of it and i'm just going you know immediately dive for the radio for uh the guy following me steve gagney to to watch it and (laughs) and uh he was not so lucky yeah yeah, it's so he had lost momentum right and, and yep. came over the top and fell into the hole uh, and ultimately took out his uh, passenger tie rod. Yeah. And uh, so his his car was up there on the side. And, and the funny thing was he was he had came out to help rescue Ben. And so he wasn't dressed for the climate. And so he was basically out in sandals and That's shorts. That's how he rides, though. <laughs> he, he, he was in short. He was in basketball shorts and Crocs. <laughs> In the middle of February. <laughs> 55 mile an hour win. Yeah. Yeah. And the bummer thing that happened was right at that point, right when you guys had crested that part and, and he went over, that was when the weather kicked up and the winds kicked up and the, the sprinkles started coming in and, and all that. So it was kind of a bummer deal because we had great weather up to that point. Yeah. Taylor from Amped Off-Road, Cameron and myself, you got a nice little picture of us <laughs> hiding behind my car, sheltering right. ourselves from the wind. It was, it was very, it was very, pretty gnarly, was like violent, to yeah. the point where I was putting my goggles on For just sure. to be able to see. Yeah. And uh, so anyways, I came up, so I saw you guys and I was like, all right, well, I'll come back and to help pull him out. So I came up a long way around the the lip of the dune as it as it grows, and and then I came over the top and I was thinking I've been out here once already, right? Like I've already driven out here, so I know the topography of this dune. And I was like, I could have sworn there was a hole right here. And as soon as in my head I was saying hole, it was holy crap! I'm down on my lid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when I saw that and saw that you were okay, my first thought was, man, he was overdue for that. <laughs> Because I'm the only guy yeah. <laughs> that has never done that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess it was my my year for being upside down. Yeah. And uh, just for some people that were asking uh, earlier. You weren't even upside down. You you had the most hilarious <laughs> wreck I've ever seen in the history of side-by-side, like nose down. <laughs> it was just 
It was just, just a permanent lawn dart. Oh, yeah. It, it, it was almost an inappropriate position with that butt sticking straight up in the air. Yeah. I love that picture I took of the... Oh, it was great. It was great. My, fa- my favorite thing, you did some sort of a video to it where you just showed it in the backdrop. I don't know if it was a story or what that you yeah, put on yeah. Instagram. It, you just put it in the backdrop and all you did is show the picture and then look at the camera and go, ha ha! <laughs> that was it. It was about my time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, anyway, so... That thing came out of there pretty dang good, though, considering. Considering, yeah. And it really doesn't have any anything to show for it either outside of, I think... I think the front plastics, the tabs that they connect to might be bent a little bit because the I, I broke the hood tabs off the hood. And so I got a new hood and now it doesn't sit flush with the with the top of the car. So I think there might be a tab in there. I need to go bend back out. I need to take the front fascia off and all that to, to find it. But uh, yeah, that, that car survived. No problem. And basically, I just popped over the lip of this this erosion of the lip of the dune and cleared, I don't know, five feet of dune before my front tires hit the bottom of the dune yeah. and then just kind of rolled over on its front grill and and I was hanging there. And, the, and so the point I was trying to make, though, is some people have asked me about the harnesses because that Razor has the Click 6 uh, harnesses in it that are that are adjustable and then they kick in like a seat belt. And uh, a lot of people give those things crap for not performing. I'm guilty um, of that. And uh, just so everybody knows, they locked up just like they were supposed to and I was held secure until I was able to pull myself out of them. So... Um, just my two cents. I think they're a great product, but people out there have given them a, a bad rap, um, and it, maybe they're maybe it's justified. But I don't it's know. Just com- it's a comfort level thing. <laughs> yeah, I think I think people just feel more comfortable with yeah. a solid strap, and I'm and I'm not dogging either one of those, but I think there's a lot of talk about those products, and I think in my in my example, they have worked and they are comfortable. The moral of the story <laughs> is honestly, if you're moving the car, if you're doing anything, put your harness on. Period. Period. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's the retractable stock harness or an aftermarket. Or even just a seatbelt. Just just make sure that you're make sure you're securing yourself. Like like if somebody hops into the car with me, I'm not moving that car till they buckle in. Period. Right. It's a non starter. There's a lot of guys out in, especially in the trails, like when we go up to North Idaho and stuff, you'll find guys that are just they've bypassed the yep. the, the seat belt uh Playing with safety and all that stuff and they're hanging out the cars with no no doors or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like yeah, I understand the sense of freedom that you get from that, but at the same time, you should probably smarten up a little bit because yeah. you're you're gonna you're playing with fire and it's ultimately gonna inevitably bite you in the butt. Yeah, I, I have a water block, you know, like what I have a lot of respect for the water and stuff, and like if I if I were going through some pretty serious and off camber type water crossing things that really kind of buck the car around a little bit, I would be. There's nothing scarier in my mind than being trapped underwater yep. with a car on its lid. And, you know, use your best judgment. It's just uh, just make sure you're getting home. You know, I it's Noth- nothing's worth your life. So 100 percent. So, uh, yeah. So we had fun there. We uh, we ultimately helped get the uh, the Turbo S pulled out, Steve's Turbo S. And uh, then we had some uh, recovery issues on on getting mine pulled out because of the angle it was at, but it was basically pulling it back on its on its wheels and then um, securing it so it didn't flip over when we tried to navigate the uh, the crevasse and and get it straightened out again. Uh, and then ultimately uh, we got that back to camp and it had sat up upside down for long enough that all the oil drained through the intake. And uh, so then I had a cleanup to do. Yeah. Uh, went into town, bought some oil and some filter and a filter and. And it had leaked uh, basically about two quarts out the intake. Oh, so wow. there was quite a bit there. Yeah. And that was my concern driving back to camp, right? Was, you know, are the temperatures climbing? You know, is it has it sat long enough? So we, Taylor and I were both in the car. We were, we were listening. We were smelling. We were keeping an eye on the temperature, on the gauge cluster, um, stuff like that. So yeah. got back to camp. Got it cleaned up uh, overnight and got that new setup, and then it was ready to load up the the next day. Or yeah. the, did we load up that day? No, the uh, next day. no, it was the next day. Yeah, yeah we yeah. got a nice ride in on Saturday before we hit the road. Oh, but, so that was Friday. Yeah, so uh, you got to take you got to take your car down that little chute that I did last year. And yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that came out the other side. Yeah, I, I thought that was a down and up. So I I did a down and up on it last year. I just didn't have the confidence to tackle it with no brakes. Right. You know, it uh, it's straight down. It's through trees. You're going to bash into some trees on the and, and there's no room for air. You know, and and part of the reason too is based on a little family emergency. This, you know, wasn't wasn't my family emergency. It was uh, uh, our buddy. Uh, we needed to get hit the road a little earlier than we intended. And I thought to myself, if I go tackle this and run into a problem where I go off this this shelf, we're talking 
possibly hours. two hours wenching recovery and it's just not worth it well because the the trail we went down um is a is a quad trail for sure and it darts in and out of trees and it is a fall off on both sides it's almost like somebody went with a with a helicopter and just made a little path of of sand down this trail and because there's nothing on either side of it it's awesome it was a great it was a lot of fun yeah, actually yeah yeah i'm telling you you know when we going went up, up it wouldn't have been as fun but well, going down we went, it was and when we went out there last year there wasn't anything that really got my blood boiling there wasn't anything that just set that adrenaline on fire coming out of there did like when i went down that i was like super respectful of it super careful but when i got down to the bottom and then flipped the ue and came back out of there i'm like this could go bad this could go bad do i have enough power is it too steep as soon as I knew that I had it and it was open enough to where I could pin it and get myself out of there, I uh, the blood started pumping. I'm like, right, you pulled it off. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and now have gone going down that trail. Um, I'm surprised you made it up last year. It's no joke. I mean, how wide? You're, I mean, you're 72 plus the wheels and the scats and everything. Like it just. Yeah. I don't know how you would have done that without the extra extra power. Well, the thing is, is like when you come out of there, because it's so tight, because you're bashing off trees and because you, you, you could fall off the shelf, I wasn't able to go full throttle. I was only at about third to quarter throttle. You don't want to do that on a hill climb. No. And you, you need to, you need as much momentum as you can get. So like I said, it wasn't until the, the last third of it that I was pinned. And, right. Uh, well, and because you're darting it. through the trees, right. like you now looking back on that trail, you had to have had one wheel on the trail and one wheel hanging off the trail the entire time. Oh, so I, all I heard there is that I was awesome. So that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't hold back, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it was a killer trail. So fun. I mean, like a 64-inch machine uh, is definitely more ideal than my big guy, but uh, yeah, it was it was great. Yeah, so we had a good time. Yeah. Uh, the weather cleared up, and it was a bummer that we weren't able to stick around. We saw start. We started seeing people show up. Um, yeah. UTV obsessions, um, and a very uh, Captain Jack came and and did yep. some wheelies for us, and that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, put us all to shame. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I saw you out there. You were you were trying your best to uh, to keep up, but uh, I think we need a few more horses under the belt. We need a lot more horses, but what we really need is a lot more paddle. Uh, to get my car to to do a wheelie, I really have to slam it into the face of certain lips. And at that point, I think, you know, I'm going too fast. And at the top of those lips, my car wants to jump instead of wheelie. And then I just don't have enough power to hold it up. And enough pa- Well, I probably have enough power. I know I don't have enough paddle. So, I mean, like, uh, there was a couple of videos of it, and you can see my car just barely making contact with the sand, and you're just not going to make, you're not going to hold a wheelie up if the back tires aren't aren't gripping. Right. So, yeah, we had a good time and, and made our way back, and, and uh, I know you guys got a bunch of cool bangers for full throttle and all that out there, and um, Cam did what he does. and he's He has some, uh, he has some great cl- uh, footage stacked that he hasn't even used yet, you know, some drone stuff that's going to be really cool. You I know? saw you, uh, you got to have a little bit of A-roll time. You got, got to have some FaceTime in front of the camera. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I've been trained by some pretty, you know, between Bam Bam Productions for um, the Gears Rock Wrenches show for Destination Polaris, like when when they put the camera in your face, you want to be competent, but you want to be fast. You want like short little hitters. Yep. So you're thinking about that. It's a lot harder to do than you think. It can be, like especially when you got a lot of information that you want to get out there. Yep. And but yeah, it you know I sent out a video to a lot of dealers. And asked them to release it, and it just blew up. My DM, my DM was blowing up, and so it was. It was good. People, I think people liked the, liked the clips. Awesome. Yeah, and so, it answered a lot of questions a lot of our dealers get. Yeah. So, that was and good. that that's a big thing right now is, is is getting brands to educate, and yeah. that's what we need more of. Um. So came back, uh, and then like you said, you have a car. Uh, that car actually went to uh Superior. Yep. So the X3s over at Superior getting uh, waiting <laughs> on waiting. some on some on some performance upgrades. Yeah, it's gonna be wait. It's gonna. It sounds like it's probably gonna be waiting maybe about another month, give or yeah. take. Um, I I do have a, a pretty pretty big group that wants to try and get into Moses Lake at the end of April. And man, it sounds like we might be right down to the wire. But yeah, you know, uh, the guys at Superior, wait a minute. Anything you've done is, oh, has has right. down. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the guys at Superior, they're, they're they're amazing. You know, it just goes back to what we talk about with the Northwest and the amazing support that the industry has up here. I can't wait to go over there and check out their RC setup. 
I would love to get into an RC car and go race over there at the Art Superior RC track that they built over there. Yeah, yeah. I found with RC cars, I've I've dabbled with them a little bit. I was I'm I I I get more excited about building them than right. driving them. I mean, building them and tuning on them and stuff was just as fun, maybe right. even more fun. You know. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I don't know. I'm working on a couple angles to maybe to get you know some cars into the into the into our shop so we can start building some stuff and. The well, kids love that kind of stuff exactly too. Exactly what I was going to say is your yeah. two boys would love it. And uh, they're doing more of a carpet series where you're doing a lot of indoor racing. Um, and uh, I think that would be fun. But I also want to get into the the rock crawling scene. There's a there's a big growth in the RC rock crawling scene, and uh, I would love to have some uh, some dabbles in that. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Um, so. Uh, a couple podcasts ago, we came out and did talked about the commander um, being a Can Am guy. Kind of, what were your first impressions on that? You know, you keep calling me a Can Am guy. I just, I'm gonna. I, I'm I like <laughs> what works, you know, and I, I like to dabble too. You know, I, 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 if I were to pick a new machine and go buy a new machine right now, I would say number one on my list would be a Turbo S, and number two on my list would probably be a General. Um, but uh, I. I, I love where the industry's headed. You know, they're definitely, I mean, I, I, they're definitely targeting people that want a dual sport application. They want something kind of sporty, but small enough to do some certain trails, haul some gear, go out picnic, you know, because if there's one thing that I've found out is this, this hobby can be for everyone in your family. But it's not if you're just on some high, well, in my case, it's not when I got a high horsepower car and want to just absolutely be pinned the entire time. The family's not into that, <laughs> you know, but you know, it, I do want my family to eventually get involved in a lot of the things that I do out there because I want to spend time with them. And those type of machines really, really help with that. If you if you look at uh, kind of the option for a family to have two cars where somebody is focused on the sport side of it and somebody's fo- focused on more of just the adventure side of it. I think that Commander would be a great uh, accompanying car to a pure sport car as a second, you know, like for a family that has the racers or and then the rest of the family, right? And once again, it's kind of an, a testament to how how Polaris's influence, you know, yeah. Uh, well, the I think Ar- it shows with the Armax and with the Commander upgrade and stuff. It's very evident that you know people are taking note that that General's no joke. Well, and I think that they're because I mean, you can look at the fact that they have the Maverick Sport and then they have now the Commander. Uh, refresh, which is almost identical to the the Maverick Sport, and in that reinvestment of development time and tooling and all that other stuff, uh, it kind of reaffirms the idea that the sport utility market is the quickest growing segment right now. Uh, and we just had a podcast uh, recently with our our buddy from HDR, Brandon Twitchell, and that was one of the topics we brought up was that you know for from like 2016 to 2019, Pure Sport was like the most aggressive growing market in side by side. And I think that uh, ever since then, the sport utility market has slowly become, you know, a mammoth of growing um, market share. And and the utility has always been the biggest market share of UTVs um, in the in the utility market. Um, but the the sport utility crossover, I think, is just going as we've talked before about overlanding and and all these adventure seeking people is going to be the biggest growing segment. And I think it's going to be the biggest growing segment for a long time. Yeah. You know, and Can-Am came out with some aftermarket parts from it for it right off the bat. You know, they have a roof rack, they have some windows and stuff. That and specifically target them. For segment. sure. For sure. That's exactly what it's targeting. And, uh, you know, that's exciting. Very yeah. Exciting. Yeah. It, it was, in, it, it's funny listening back to some of the episodes where we're like, I think they're going to come out with market specific vehicles that tend to push towards the segments, the, the niche segments and that's what we're seeing happen, right? Yeah. With with the Commander uh, re-release and how it's so focused on that kind of nimble adventure seeker, um, I'm interested to see what they do with the Maverick uh, and the Maverick Sport. And with the the rumored replacement for the X3, how that transitions you know, some of the, uh, some of the positioning of these models, what do you, what do you foresee as far as like that lineup? Do you think the Maverick sport disappears or gets replaced or is the, I don't know, weird second cousin or? Well, I mean, I think you're going to probably see a little bit more like what I'm doing. You'll probably see a little bit more, uh, sport oriented machines, guys that want, uh, only how it can justify having one rig, right? you know, but they want to do, they want to do the dune thing. They want to do the fire road thing. They want to do the overland thing. So you're probably going to see a lot of, uh, turbo S's out there, but 
in terms of the actual experience of riding mountains a uh, uh, multi-day, I could not agree with you more. That's not going anywhere. Um, I, I think that we're going to see an abundance of uh, R-Maxes, Commanders, things like that up on the uh, up on the mountains, especially up in Idaho. Um, I, I, I don't want to see it going. It, it, it's just you, you have such a great choice to make right now. Do you want the Ranger? You know, there isn't anything that you can't do to a Ranger, like between Super ATV, between Polaris, between all the other aftermarket companies, like whatever you want to do with a Ranger, it's figured out. Uh, same as an RZR general generals right in that, in that, you know, same conversation. So I think right now, like if you were to start with the pickup truck model, like a, a bed type model of a uh, side by side to build an overlander, you've got a choice. You got so many choices. It's ridiculous. You could go with the R Max. You could go with the Defender. You could go with the Commander. You could go with the General. You could go with the Ranger. You can go with what am I missing? I know I'm missing something. Yeah, there, it's there's, just, there's quite a bit. You, you've got a great. You've got a series of great choices to make. And I'm curious on how Polaris repositions the general. Like the general's been such a staple for them, but I think they're getting way they're getting they're not seeing the growth as they used to see in the general. And now they have a lot more competition, right? Yeah. <clears throat> how do they what would be one thing they could do, excuse me. <clears throat> what would be one thing they could do that would reposition the general to be competitive with the onslaught of competitors? in the scene right now? Uh, you know, off top of my head, I would say something kind of similar to maybe like a high lifter type, uh, RZR or, uh, you know, right. Cause there are high lifter options sure, for the other models. Sure. Um, maybe dynamics, maybe we start seeing dynamics on it. I would put money on that. Yeah. I think that'd be a, I think that'd be a good bet. Maybe you start seeing some generals coming from the factory on 32s. Yeah. You know, that'd what, be cool. what do you think about coming from the factory with a trailing arm? Uh, <sighs> Do you think it it blurs the line on the, the utility to the sport? No, no. I I, I think that uh, I, I I think I, I I don't know. You know, I at that point because you'd be sacrificing payload capacity and towing capacity to go to a trailing. Well, line. and you know what you just described is what Matt Scarpuzzi from Savage built. You right. know, he he built an RZR trailing arm car with a bed very similar to a general, you know? <laughs> right. So I, I definitely think that, uh, I, I, mean, I, I think it'd be a hit yeah. for sure. I think it'd generate a lot more sales. I think so. I think so. You know, um, I, objectively speaking, like when you look at the Ranger, the general and the commander and, and now that, and the defender as well, like where, where, what do you like? Like, what, what would you gravitate towards? Would you go, let's, let, as a matter of fact, let me clarify, <laughs> take the general out of the equation. Cause I know you're going to answer with a general, but right. if you were to look at those other platforms, like what, what are you liking? Like, I, I'll be honest with you. I've seen that MR defender. It's awesome. It's, it's pretty sweet. so sweet. Yeah. The XMR I mean, series. Yeah. They're not slow. I've seen them. They're, they've got some pickup to them. They're pretty, yep. they're pretty quick. And from a storage capacity, it's very similar to the Ranger. They got a ton of room. Yeah. I would say that I'm not a big fan of the bench seat style long term. Like I'm, I'm good with riding in it and having a good time with it. But if I were to be investing money into something, I probably wouldn't be looking at a bench seat system. Eight day trip. That's probably going to wear on you. Exactly. Yeah. They're not going to have the comfort. Um, and especially for the family, like the family is good with it for like a quick 10 minute, 15 minute ride or whatever, but they're not going to like it long trip scope. Right. So, um, that being said, the, the Rangers and the defenders also, while they can be peppy, uh, peppy doesn't mean fast. Yeah. And um, that's something, especially when you start talking about bigger tires and all that, uh, and having to have horsepower, which they don't from the factory come with the same amount of horsepower as the sport machines. I, I, I would probably tend to veer away from that personally and look more towards a XP1000 or a Commander 1000R, uh, something like that. The, the nice thing about the new Commander, right, is that whole bed scenario and that it's a large square capable bed that dump, that you do have the dump ability, which I wouldn't use too often. But um, the fact that it has a tailgate, that it has the extender on it, I could pack a lot of stuff on that on that rig. Yeah. If you're thinking about uh, what to pack, what not to pack, and you're being pretty critical about your gear, your loadout, I got to tell you, the Pro is pretty underrated. The the, ex the, the storage capacity uh, on the Pro is pretty, pretty immense. For the destination Polaris shoot, everything that I took fit in that bed. The, the thing I think that people don't think about is the shape and size of the things that you're taking. Mm -hmm. So like the Pro XP, 
has a very deep and large bed. It can carry a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, the thing about it, and though, is... And it sits low, too. And so it sits low behind yeah, your sideline, right? It doesn't mess right? with center of gravity, and it also helps secure it, you know, to where it's less likely to bounce out of there. The thing about having, like, a commander, commander bed or a general bed or a ranger bed or a defender bed, something like that, is those are all square beds, which means coolers fit better, and they fit better with other things. And They're more accessible. They're more accessible. You can put a, a generator back there. You can put um, awkward, like, uh, cots and tents and things like that that are all awkward shaped to where if you were in a sport machine, those would either have to go on roof racks or vertically stand up on their ends or, you know, awkward situations where you have to pack it um, or in the back seat of a four-seater, right? So the nice thing about these utility vehicles is that that bed is more functional. It has more ability to do what you want it to do, even though you're sacrificing in other areas. Uh, if you're if you're concerned about storage, um, that is a huge win for those cars. Yeah. So yeah. I'd I'd probably be looking at one of those that has you know that kind of capacity, either a general, which you said not to, not to mention, but the either a general or a commander or you know something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, looking at the two UTVs that I have in the garage right now, I've got the four seater Pro and the X3. I mean, the, they're not in your garage right now. Well, they're not in my garage. <laughs> Thank, thanks for the reminder. Um, I, uh, where we're kind of taking that Pro is big, very big, you know, big tire car, high car, almost like a pre runner, a little bit like a pre runner, almost like a tra- chase truck type UTV, you know, I mean, everything's going on that thing from uh overly capable chainsaw mounts to i mean you name it it's it's going on there we got some big lights i think we're going to have about thirty thousand forward facing lumens you know courtesy of baja designs thank you uh but i could not be more excited for where that car is going i mean there's more parts that are about to go onto that rig than i even remember even getting you know on tmw doors um trio exhausts getting a flash gonna wake it up a little bit we're gonna change the clutches out because it that pro actually was subject to the recall and right. uh and so we're ripping all those out and putting in um, upgraded hardware and what what flash system are you going to go with uh i think it's going to be a power tune setup so yeah it'll be interesting to see how that compares to like the evo com- like options out there and yeah. whatnot yeah so it has currently it has a stage one evo tune to it and when when you start to jump up on the evo tune for the pro you have to you have to change fuels you know it gets evo's setup for the pro gets very aggressive very quickly right. uh the stage one took a lot of the slop out of the throttle it felt more alive um but you pulled know, some it, of the limit, limiters it, off. It did, it did for sure. You know, and, and uh, we're we're going to have a lot of testing to do over the next four months before our next couple of really aggressive rides. I got to figure out, you know, first and foremost, I got to figure out what car I'm taking, and then I have to figure out wh- how the range has changed. You know, right. what the range on a big turbo X3 is going to wind up being, what the range on the Pro is going to be, be uh, going to be with uh, more horsepower. I, I don't think the Pro is going to be affected at all. I think the Pros, if, if anything, it'll go further. I think your X3 with, with the upgrades will be um, very thirsty. It'll be thirsty. And very warm. Uh, and Could that be. might be just something to consider in Utah climates and things like that. Yeah. Um, where the Pro, I think, is going to end up being, uh, the concern is going to be more or less, you know, are the shocks replaced? Are they? Is the suspension going to handle that much tra- that long of a travel span? Right, um, and then as far as performance goes, I think you're going to be more worried about your belts and making sure your clutching is going right. to be up to snuff. Right. Yeah, I did do a little bit of uh, looking online yesterday in regards to what options I might have in replacing that current shock setup on, right. on the Pro. Uh, shock therapy has a setup that's pretty attractive. The RC2 package yeah. is pretty hot. Yeah, I think so. You know, that's a very heavy car. I wouldn't be surprised loaded down. It's about 2,400 pounds, and I think it really overwhelms what it currently has. Um, so I'm going to be really interested to talk to them and give them an idea of what I do and if they like the application, which they will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not afraid. But, uh, I mean, there might be a potential for a different shock company on those as well. So we'll uh, see how that shakes out. Uh, a blue one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, with the blue one, it all comes down to if it's available. You right. know, I, I, there was a rumor about six months ago that they, at the time, they were six to eight months behind, you know, just with COVID right. and stuff like that. If they've if they've kind of caught, caught back up, I, I definitely don't want to rule them out, you know, because yeah. if the difference between... Um, if the difference between all these setups is within five hundred dollars, that's all in the same range for me, and I, I would prefer to have the best. I, I, right. I just when you're going out and you got to do like sixteen hundred miles, and that is a real thing. And it just money to me 
it's a real thing, but it also what you're buying, you're buying peace of mind. You're buying peace of, yeah, hundred percent. You know, you're buying you're buying peace of mind knowing that whatever it is that you're about to tackle, you've got a you got a piece of equipment that's equipped to handle it. The way I say is basically you in your head have a picture of how everything's gonna end up in the end. Mm-hmm. And you are investing in that picture. However that image looks for you, you have to invest in how to get there. Yeah. And and shocks are a huge part of that. Have you ever, you know, and this this isn't a question for you, it's just something to think about, it's something to stew on. Have you ever spent six to eight months planning something and then had your equipment fail? There's it it causes a lot of anxiety, it causes a yep. lot of frustration. It causes a lot of panic. I, I've had it happen to me and I never want to do it again. I yeah. just, I, I want to know that I, that I put all the thought in I needed to, to, to put myself in the best possible position to get the job done. And what it really comes down to is you can't just assume everything's going to be perfect. You have to assume that at some point the weak points will be shown. And if you need to, uh, you need to identify the weak points. hundred percent. And that's where the shakedowns come in, right? Like figuring out how a full day's trip is an investment of not only getting out and riding, but it's also push it hard like you would on whatever adventure you're going on yeah. so that you identify the weak points. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the two machines that I do have right now, that it there's such a stark contrast that when I hop into the Pro, it feels like I'm taking a break. That's how nice that car rides. Yep. You know, with that four seat and the long travel, you know, the X3 is just like this pure sport, just beast this behemoth that if you disrespect it, it's going to clip you, you know, it's going to make you pay for that mistake. Uh, the pro feels like it'll get away with anything, right. you know? And I kind of consider it like the X3 is kind of like a, a pissed off honey badger. Yeah. And the, the four seat pro XP is more like a, a big, you know, safari lion. Like it's just like, it's going to rule. It's there to get the X3 back <laughs> home when you destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, don't mess with it. it it's yeah. got things handled for sure. For sure. So yeah. that's it's very competent, yeah. is what I'm saying. So yeah. I just want to be in a place where where you and I go out into the garage and we're just like we don't care. We take anything to go tackle anything at any time. And yeah, that's that's a great place to be. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping that this year uh, results in a car that I can start wrenching on that you know it ends up being that end all car for for the family and I and sure and and these long expeditions that we're doing so that you know basically if you call up hey we're doing the dunes I'm like cool throw those paddles on or if it's going on the trail and going tree clearing like cool I'll yeah. pull the shot no we're, on. We're, we are we love to be able to rage out on the dunes but we're mountain riders man I, I am 100% a mountain first for sure rider for yep. sure no question about it Yep. So anyways, we got a busy schedule coming up. We got a lot of events coming up. Uh, as everybody knows, I'm working with UTV Takeover. Uh, we have, uh, even just today, I got another thing thrown on the plate to go cover, another event to be at. And so uh, looking forward to really getting out and, and showcasing a lot of the talent and a lot of events and a lot of the lifestyle that we enjoy um, uh, this year, uh, especially with, you know, the, the new capabilities of the equipment that we got and, and some of that. So, um, really looking forward to that. And, uh, my plate just like literally the last three days has just gotten immensely full. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. You, you know, and I, if there's one thing that I really want to change in 2021, it's, uh, I've been doing the UTV thing for four years now where I jump from, uh, two wheels to four wheels. I have yet to have, you know, you can't go, I mean, you could, you don't, the YXZ isn't going to be the first car that you choose to go snow wheeling. Let's call it what it is. Right. Um, I have yet to have a machine that is either capable or that's fixed and able to go <laughs> drive during the winter. And that's what I want in 2022 like yeah. I, or 2021, uh, from November, 2021 until February, 2022. I want both those cars in my garage ready to rock and roll at any time and I want to take them up in northern Idaho and go do some snow. I, I just, I've it, always it thought about me. I just, I've always thought of that snow camping was always a, a fun idea. Like it's not for the family, like the family would have no desire to do that whatsoever, but I think that would be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. And your buddies over at uh, Off Road Power Products they're doing a they series eat, sleep, right now. They breathe that. And uh, they're out in the snow and I think that would be a, a killer a killer time to go, you know, this this next winter uh, up into the mountains and do some like I've been a fan of hammock camping now since our last adventure. I think that's awesome. And they have snow versions for that. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be an awesome time. Yeah, I've actually been researching cold weather camping type stuff and come across this company called Krua Outdoors that I'm really interested in. They do like insulated tents. Mm -hmm. And this stuff's pretty fascinating. But if if there's one element to it that I kind of don't like, it's just it just adds time 
for setup and oh takedown. for sure you really got a plan for it yeah um so the whole thing where i set up camp at night predominantly that's got to go by no, the wayside in for snow that sort in of snow stuff. climates you do that during the day yeah for sure and, and that's the thing i like about the the hammock stuff because they have these insulated wrappers for the hammocks and the, and the covers and all this other stuff that zip up and the nice thing about those is that setup is very minimal and teardown is very minimal and the loadout's very light in the snow you need to be light and yeah. nimble and uh so that's why i'm excited to check it out what's your take on hammock camping do you find it to be very comfortable like do you, is it more comfortable than being on the ground on a pad um i would say a thousand times more comfortable than being on the ground are you um, a back, are you a back sleeper though this is traditionally because of my back my lower disc being blown out um i haven't been i've usually been on my side um but that being said uh the the travels we did last this last year with the hammock i've really come around to it and i really enjoyed it and now it's more of a point like how do i work it into with the family because with the family you want to be with the tent with the family and, and enjoy that aspect of it but at the same time it's it to me it's way more comfortable and, and enjoy it. you're basically hanging out in the middle of nature versus confining yourself in a box in nature mm -hmm. and it's a different experience and i really enjoyed it yeah yeah i uh I just, we, we have gear from Pro Eagle. We have gear from Power Tank. I want to get out there and start testing all that stuff. It's, yeah, we're uh, going to do that here shortly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I, Power Tank. Power Tank. I want to get the, get some shots of their stuff in action because I think it's such an amazing solution. And it's a... Non-mechanical, non reliable. For sure. Yep. For sure. And I, I just... Uh, I just need to have a car function, <laughs> <laughs> functioning for more than a couple of months to uh, be able to get out there and go do it. But it, it's coming, you know. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, um, we got a lot of things coming up and we're excited to kind of help uh, release those things into the world and, and be a part of this media creation mechanism that we're, we're doing. And uh, a lot of cool events coming up, a lot of cool uh, stories to be told. And I know you guys are at Full Throttle going to be putting out a lot of more content this year uh, with some of those efforts. And I got a lot of new uh, companies that I'm working with that we're going to be bringing on board to do some new cool stuff. And uh, yeah, stay tuned to all of our channels, YouTube, Side by Side Guys, Facebook, Side by Side Guys, uh, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Um, grinder, Tender. <laughs> You're just going to ride that Grinder train. I am. <laughs> so uh, yeah, anyways, uh, we had a great time uh, this last couple weeks and uh, we got a lot of work ahead of us and we're looking forward to sharing it with all of you. So find us online, like, share, comment, review, all that stuff. Peace. Peace.